Jake and Lily Jupiter stood inside the clock tower of Leeds Town Hall and looked out over the busy streets below them. It was the start of summer and the weather had already turned much warmer. People strolled along the streets carrying their folded jackets over their arms, soft smiles on their faces. The city park was already full of office workers reclining on benches and enjoying a coffee. The warm air flowed around the twins on the clock tower, bringing with it a promise of many sunny days ahead. Lily said, It's days like these that make me want to visit the seaside. I hope we get to go there again soon. Me too, Jake replied. He cast a glance at the engraving on one of the stone columns behind him. Lily, are you sure you want to wake him up? He looks so peaceful in his sleep. Lily moved over to the column and crouched at the side of it. The engraving was of a small dragon who was curled up and fast asleep. The dragon was called Zavara, which meant sleepy. And not all that long ago, he had been woken from his slumber to help the Jupiter twins with an adventure. Once he'd woken up, the dragon had grown in size and taken the twins through a magical portal to the secret land of dragons. The twins had been given valuable gifts from the dragons, which they took back to their school, the Leora Academy, a school of magic that lay beneath the streets of Leeds. Once the gifts had been stored away in the school's cupboards, Zavara had returned to his sleeping position on the column and he'd asked the twins to come by often to wake him up for a chat, which was what the twins had done several times and were about to do again on that sunny day. Lily gazed fondly at the engraving and said, I promise to wake him up again on the first warm day of summer. Zavara said it would be the perfect time to catch up with us and hear about our latest adventures. Jake crouched at Lily's side and grinned. He said, He's quite a nosy dragon, isn't he? Lily grinned back and nodded. She added that they were quite nosy too. She waved her hand slowly over the engraving and said, Wake up. The dragon stirred in his sleep and opened his emerald green eyes. He yawned, unfurled himself, and had a good long stretch. He looked up at the twins and smiled at them. He waved and said hello. The twins waved back and said together, Hello, Zavara. The dragon flew off the column and up towards the twins. He hovered in the air, his little wings slowly flapping. He said, It's good to see you again. Is this a business call concerning a magical matter, or are you here for a chat and a catch-up? Just a chat today, Lily explained. Everything has been quiet in the school lately. We haven't been on any adventures since our Halloween one, and we told you all about that. Zavara smiled at the memory and gazed into the distance. He said that had been a wonderful adventure for them. His smile faded and a thoughtful look alighted on his face. He said, Excuse me for a moment, I need to check on something. Won't be long. Zavara flew away from the twins and all the way around the outside of the clock tower. The twins straightened up from their crouching position and watched him. The dragon returned to Lily and Jake and said, Just as I suspected, there's magic in the air, and not the usual kind. There's something wrong with the magic, but I'm not sure what yet. You two should take a look. Lily, can you stand on the north side of the tower? And Jake, can you stand on the south side? The twins nodded at the little dragon. They took up positions on either side of the tower 
and asked what they were looking for. Zavara called out, Anything unusual, I'm going to fly to the top of the tower and scan the city. Jake looked out at the clear blue sky and then down at the streets. Everything looked the same as it had a few minutes ago. It was still sunny and people were still strolling around and enjoying the gentle warmth of the day. He couldn't see anything unusual. On the opposite side of the clock tower, Lily looked out too. It was sunny as before, but she did see something on the horizon. She called out to the others, I can see something strange coming this way. Well, not strange, more unexpected. But there again, this is England, and these things happen all the time, and it gives people something to talk about. Jake walked over to his sister, smiled, and said kindly, What are you talking about, Lily? The little dragon flew down to Lily and asked her the same question. Lily pointed to the horizon and said, Rain clouds, over there, heading towards us. That's not unusual on a sunny day. Jake shrugged. Yeah, you're right about that. That's a shame. I was going to sit outside in the sun later on. Savara didn't say anything. He was staring at the rain clouds and shaking his head. He looked away from the clouds and told the twins there was something wrong with them. They weren't full of rain, but snow, and heavy snow at that. That's impossible, Lily said. It's far too warm for snow. Zavara nodded and said she was right. But those were definitely snow clouds, with a touch of thunder and lightning around the edges too. Before Lily could say, that's impossible, again, the dragon said, something is wrong with the weather. You need to tell your head teacher what's going on. I'll stay here and keep a lookout whilst you two go back into the school. The twins took one last look at the faraway clouds, which had now grown much bigger, and hurried down the stairs and into the secret school of magic. They rushed along a corridor and stopped outside their head teacher's office. As if sensing they were there, the door swung open and Dr. Eleanor Howard stood there. She gave them a small nod and said, Jake, Lily, I can tell from your faces that something is wrong. Come inside and tell me everything. Dr. Howard opened the door wider and the twins stepped inside. In a jumble of words, the twins told their head teacher everything. Dr. Howard said she needed to take a closer look at the weather. The twins thought she was going to go outside and look at the sky and were very surprised when something else happened instead. Dr. Howard moved over to the far wall of her office and waved her hand over it. A brass lever appeared on the wall with the word up on it. She moved the lever to the up position and the room began to shake slightly. Then it moved up and up as though it had turned into a lift. When it came to a stop, a window magically appeared and through it could be seen the streets of Leeds. The twins moved closer to the window and peered out. Heavy snow was now falling, but it wasn't snowflakes as would be expected, but tiny flakes of sparkling fog instead. Dr. Howard opened the window and put her arm out. She caught a falling flake on her open palm. 
she pushed her arm back and examined the tiny foggy flake. She sighed and shook her head. She mumbled to herself, I had a feeling this would happen again one day. The twins had seen their head teacher talking to herself before, so they didn't interrupt her. Dr. Howard shook her head again. The sparkling, foggy flake on her palm melted and left a drop of water behind. She looked over at the twins and said, This is magical weather. It's been created by Blizzard. Lily asked who Blizzard was. Dr. Howard smiled and said, Blizzard is a wizard. And yes, that is his real name, which is a wonderful coincidence because he's a weather wizard. He's responsible for the weather in another world, a magical world. But it seems his weather has become mixed up and some of it has found its way into our world by mistake. This happened once before and I was asked to track him down and find out what was wrong. When I found him, I discovered he hadn't been getting enough sleep. He'd been working too many hours during the day and then staying up too late at night. When I caught up with him and discovered how tired he was, we had a long chat and he agreed to change his sleeping habits for the better. Which he did do, but I had a funny feeling he would fall back into his old patterns one day, which it seems he now has. Will you track him down again and have another talk with him? Lily asked. Dr. Howard smiled at the twins. I'd like you to do that, please. You know enough magic spells now to undertake such a mission. And you know how important a good night's sleep is, especially when it comes to casting magic. The twins shared a worried look. Lily asked the head teacher if the weather wizard would take advice from them as they hadn't been at the school very long. Dr. Howard placed a hand on each of the twins' shoulders and said, You two come from a long line of magical humans, and everyone knows the name Jupiter. Furthermore, you have a natural ability for magic and for helping those who need assistance. I know you are more than capable of finding Blizzard and talking some sense into him, she smiled. In a kind way, of course. The twins still weren't sure about that, but they gave Dr. Howard the most confident smiles they could muster up. Jake asked, where should we look for Blizzard? Follow the weather chaos, their head teacher replied. This will help you. She clicked her fingers and a map appeared. The map floated towards the twins and Lily caught it. It's the map of weather chaos, Dr. Howard explained. The areas where the weather has become mixed up will shimmer and look like they're moving slightly on the map. Can you see where we are on this map and how this area is shimmering? The twins examined the map and nodded. Dr. Howard explained, This means... We're the only ones getting the wrong type of weather at the present time. But I know this will change very soon. Follow the map 
and go to any areas on it that shimmer. Eventually, you will catch up with Blizzard. Along the way, could you cast spells to reverse the peculiar weather that's taking place? I'll show you how to do that now. The head teacher moved closer to the window, and the twins followed her. She cast the weather reversing spell, and the falling foggy flakes instantly vanished, and the sun shone down brightly again. The people on the streets carried on with their day as if nothing had happened, although some of them did give the sky a suspicious look. The head teacher asked the twins if they'd heard the words of the spell clearly. They nodded. She then asked them to cast a weather protective spell over themselves and their belongings because they were going to end up in the middle of all sorts of peculiar weather. The twins had only learnt that particular spell the previous week, but had practised it several times since then. The spell gave protection against any kind of weather and would ensure that their clothes and belongings remained entirely dry and warm, no matter what. Lily tucked the map into the inside pocket of her jacket And then, at the same time as her brother, she cast the weather protective spell over herself. The head teacher wished them good luck and said they would need to go through a portal to the magical world where the wizard was and Zavara could take them there. She asked if they had their magical orbs with them. The twins said they had. The twins gave her another confident smile and left her office. As they made their way back to the clock tower, Lily asked Jake if he knew what they were doing. Jake replied, I was going to ask you the same thing. We'll work it out as we go along. We always do. Zavara was waiting for them inside the clock tower. The twins explained everything and asked if he could take them to their first destination in the magical world. Of course, the little dragon replied. And where would that be? Lily said they didn't know yet and suggested they look at the map of weather chaos together. She opened it up, and they all looked closely at it. Lily pointed to a small island at the bottom of the map and said, This island looks like it's shimmering. I think we should go here first. Zavara confirmed he could take them there through a magical portal in the clouds. He said he'd have to grow to his normal size first. The little dragon flew out of the clock tower and hovered in the air. In seconds, he had grown much, much bigger. He moved closer to the twins and asked them to climb onto his back. Lily put the map into her pocket and climbed onto the dragon's back. Jake followed her. Zavara rose into the sky and flew towards a single fluffy white cloud. He went right through it, with the twins securely on his back. When they came out of the other side of the cloud, the twins saw they were in a different world a world where the sky was pale purple and dotted with blue clouds. The dragon took them towards the island they'd seen on the map. It was a beautifully warm day and the sun 
shone brightly over the island. As they flew closer, the twins noticed the island was covered in pink grass. There was a lake in the middle of the grass, and the water was the same pale purple as the sky. An animal was swimming in the water, and when the twins got closer, they recognised it as a penguin. And as they got even closer, they noticed folded wings on the back of the penguin. They'd never seen a penguin with wings before. Zavara landed on the pink grass and lowered his back to allow the twins to jump off. He yawned and said, Oh, I'm very sleepy. I need to return to the clock tower for a nap. You can use your magical orbs to travel to other places if you need to. Tell me all about your adventures later. Lily and Jake stood on the soft grass and waved goodbye to Zavara as he flew away. The twins saw some winged penguins huddled beneath the shade of a nearby tree. When the penguins saw the twins, they waved and asked them to come closer. Lily and Jake jogged over to them and introduced themselves and told the penguins why they were there. Jake smiled and said, I can't see anything wrong with your weather, though. It's lovely and warm. Penguin at the front of the group sighed and flapped her wings. She said, It's not supposed to be warm. We're penguin fairies, and our island is usually covered in snow. That changed a short while ago. The snow disappeared and the sun came out. That lake over there used to be our ice skating rink. We know the warm weather is great for some animals, but we much prefer the snow. She smiled at the swimming penguin fairy in the lake. Well, most of us prefer the snow. Bettina over there is having a marvellous time. She loves this warmer weather. Jake said to Lily, Shall we change the weather back? Lily looked at the penguin fairies and asked if they would like the snow back. The penguin fairies nodded and flapped their wings in joy. One of the penguin fairies flew over to her swimming friend in the lake and told Bettina the water would be changing back into ice soon. Bettina climbed out of the water. She was wearing a gold swimming costume. She waddled over to everyone and asked what was going on. When an explanation was given, Bettina sighed and said she'd had a great time in the warm lake and would treasure the memory forever. Jake cast the weather-reversing spell, and within seconds, the air turned colder and snow began to fall. The snowflakes were pale purple, and when they landed on the ground, they twinkled and shimmered. The penguin fairies thanked the twins and flew towards the frozen lake, ready to skate across it, apart from Bettina, who stayed with the twins and asked where they were going next. We don't know yet, Lily replied. We need to look at the map again. She opened up the map, and saw a new shimmering island. Bettina recognised the shape of it and told the twins it was a place called Paradise Shore. She'd heard it was a very warm place 
and said she would love to take a holiday there one day. Jake said, Why don't you come with us now? We won't know what the weather will be like until we get there, though. Bettina said she would love that and told the twins she could magically transport them there using her penguin fairy magic. Bettina focused on the map and flapped her wings three times. A few seconds later, the twins and the penguin fairy were standing on the sandy beach of Paradise Shore. The sun was shining brightly in the clear purple sky. Bettina smiled and raised her face to the sun. What glorious weather. I'm going to enjoy staying here for a while. She said goodbye to the twins and waddled towards an empty sun lounger. The twins couldn't see anything out of the ordinary with the weather and were about to look at the map again. But then they heard someone calling out to them. They looked towards the sea and saw a mermaid perched on a rock. She waved to them and asked them to come closer. The twins waded into the sea knowing that their clothes would stay dry thanks to their weather-protective spell. When they got closer, the mermaid said she'd seen them magically appear and asked if they were there to sort out the unusual weather. Jake said they were. Lily held up the map and explained how they'd been led to the area but they couldn't see anything wrong with the weather. The mermaid pointed towards the sea and said, It's the weather over there that's the problem. It's raining under the water. There's rumbling thunder too and flashes of lightning. This has never happened before and everyone is very confused. Could you help us, please? The twins nodded. The mermaid asked if they would like to look at the underwater rain so they knew what they were dealing with. The twins nodded again and used a spell to allow themselves to swim and breathe underwater. Once the spell had been cast, the twins swam with the mermaid beneath the surface. Showers of glittering silver rain flowed down through the sea and drummed out a pitter-patter on the sandy floor. Low rumbles of thunder echoed out. Flashes of lightning lit up the faces of the mer-people and sea animals who were staring at the rain in utter confusion. Lily and Jake cast a weather-reversing spell and the rain vanished. The thunder quietened down and the lightning faded away. The sea was back to normal. The mermaid thanked the twins and swam with them back to the surface. She gave them some magical pearls from her necklace and said the pearls would transport them anywhere on their map of weather chaos. The twins swam back to shore and then continued on their quest. They followed the shimmering clues on the map and travelled to different places. Thanks to the mermaid's pearls, they didn't need to use their orbs once. They reversed the weather in each area they visited and then carried on with their journey.
After clearing a meadow that was full of tiny, twisting cyclones, Jake sighed and said, I don't think we're getting any closer to finding the weather wizard. Lily grinned at her brother and told him to look at the far side of the meadow. Jake did so and saw a man sitting in the grass and resting against a tree. His eyes were closed. He was wearing a long, flowing blue robe that had images of snow, rain, sunshine and rainbows on it. Jake smiled and said, That must be Blizzard, at last. The twins walked quietly over to the wizard, not wanting to disturb him, but knowing they would have to. The wizard opened his eyes, smiled at them, and said, Hello there, I'm not asleep, just resting my eyes. Oh, I see from your uniforms that you're students from the Leora Academy. And you can only be here for one reason. Your wonderful head teacher, Dr. Howard, has sent you here with a message for me. May I officially introduce myself? I am Blizzard, the weather wizard. The twins introduced themselves. Lily held up the map of weather chaos and explained why they were there. Jake finally found a use for his magical orb and magicked up images of the mixed up weather inside it to show the wizard what they had seen that day. Blizzard shook his head at himself and said, Phew, I wasn't even aware I'd been making any mistakes. Dr. Howard is correct. I haven't been getting enough sleep, but I thought I was still performing my job correctly. Alas, from what you've told me, that isn't the case. You have my heartfelt thanks for correcting my mistakes, Jake and Lily, and my apologies for creating this situation. Lily said they didn't mind at all, and it had been a great adventure. She gave the wizard a bashful smile and asked if he knew how to get a good night's sleep and did he need any help from them. Blizzard chuckled and replied, <laughs> I do know how to get a good night's sleep, but... I haven't been sticking to my nightly bedtime routine. But I'll get back to that immediately and have an early night tonight. I could do with your help with something before you return to your school. Could you cast my nighttime spells for me, please? I'm concerned I might get them mixed up because I'm so tired. You can cast the spells over that map you've brought with you and they will find their way across this world. The twins said they would love to do that. With Blizzard's help, they cast nighttime spells over the map. A spell to make the stars twinkle in the velvety dark sky. A spell to make the moon shine brightly across the land. A spell to make the sea lap softly upon the shore. A spell to make calming dreams drift towards people and animals in their slumber. The last spell was cast, and the sky above the meadow turned dark, and the first stars appeared. 
Blizzard, the sleepy wizard, yawned and said he was ready for his sleep. Lily and Jake yawned too. The wizard said he would help them get back to school. He summoned a moonbeam from above. The softly glowing beam floated towards the tired twins and wrapped around them like a warm, soft hug. The wizard thanked the twins for their help, blew softly on the moonbeam, and then he vanished. The moonbeam rose into the night sky and drifted through a cloudy magic portal and into the world where the school of magic was. The sleepy twins settled down on the soft beam of light and closed their eyes. In no time at all, they were back at the clock tower of the town hall. It was night time and Dr. Howard was waiting for them. With a gentle wave of her hands, she magically transported the twins into their soft, comfy bed. Her whisper carried on a breeze towards them. Thank you, Jake and Lily. You have done a wonderful job. Settle down and go to sleep. Good night, sweet dreams. See you in the morning.